guys, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over what happened to us when we had to take back our first set of sheep. I want this to be an educational video and explain the disease that they had and just kind of what we learned from it. Reminder that I am not a veterinarian. Please do your own research. But um, I just wanted to explain our situation and um, uh, make it educational for other beginning sheep farmers so you guys know what to look out for if you ever hear this disease name. So first, big disclaimer, I want to make sure that this doesn't come off as me bashing the farmers that we got these sheep from. Ryan and I still have a lot of respect for them and um, I'll explain everything that happened in the video but um, I just want to say that like we were not going to badmouth them. Their name is not mentioned anywhere on our channel and I will not mention their name because I just don't think that that's right. I just want this video to come off as educational because as a beginning sheep farmer you don't know what you're getting into until you get into it and then you're like oh um yeah okay now we got to deal with this so uh another disclaimer is that this is not um the only disease that sheep can get if you start googling on, on the internet you will find that sheep can get a whole list of diseases and it will actually probably scare you out of getting sheep so i do not recommend it <laughs> um yeah it can get scary and i would just say that uh, you just almost have to have a trust that everything will be okay and just make sure that you manage your sheep the best of, to the, your abilities. Also, if you haven't seen our other two videos in this series, I will uh, have them right here. The first one is uh, my argument as a farm wife, uh, why sheep are the perfect profitable livestock for a beginning farmer. So that's what um, my enterprise is going to be on our farm. We already have the cow-calf operation, but I have taken over the sheep. Obviously, Ryan helps me um, with it, but it's more of my my baby, my uh, enterprise. The second video is five things that you need to know um, before getting sheep. So I want this all to just be an educational um, series on um, beginning sheep farmers and things that you need to look out for or know before you get your first set of sheep and just kind of have your bearings set before um, they arrive on your farm. Also, I will have the playlist for our beginning sheep farmer series in the description box below, so be sure to check that out. Let's get into the story of what happened with our first sheep experience. So, um, in June of 2021, we ended up going to get some sheep from some people. We went to their farm, uh, saw their operation, and um, they were on pasture for the most part, but uh, when we went to their farm, uh, like stead where all the sheep, most of the sheep were housed, um, it was a dry lot situation and they were feeding a lot of grain, which they hadn't mentioned um, to us ever before, like in our phone calls. So that was a little bit surprising for us. They were the best people, like, Ryan and I coming in and didn't not knowing anything about sheep, these people poured out information to us. Like I was taking notes on my phone. We were taking pictures of different things and just like they gave us, I, I don't remember how long we were there, at least three or four hours, but they just gave us so much wealth of information of like starting our sheep farm and the market and um, rams and how to lamb and, and things like that. We went to their farm to uh, go load up, load out our sheep and they were going over their lambing kit and different things and you know like I said we're new we were new to sheep farming so we were just absorbing all of it and they end up going to their um, their refrigerator and pulling out some vaccines and they were like well this is for overeating, this is for this. Um, these are some of the vaccines that we give. And um, so Ryan and I were just like, okay, yeah, we have to give vaccines to our sheep to keep them alive for whatever reason so they don't get this. Um, yeah, make sure you're taking notes, Kelsey. So I was taking notes of all of these different names and um, 
we end up going out to the dry lot and getting the sheep ready to go, um, loading them up, and uh, they the people that we bought them from casually mentioned, Ryan was like, well, where, where are their lambs? I thought they were having going to have lambs by their side. And they were like, oh no, uh, these ones don't have lambs on their side. Uh, they lost their lambs. But and Ryan's like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. Like you said, they were only three or four year olds. Like, do we need to call them after this first year? They were like, oh no, 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 no uh, problem with that. You should be fine. I forgot to mention that when they were uh, showing us the vaccines, there was um, a couple of them. And I mean, just a bombarding. It's like, uh, what do they say that saying is like taking water in through a, um, a fire hose. That's what we were going through. <laughs> so they were just throwing different names out to us, of, um, you know, vaccines and feeds and minerals and all this. And we were just trying to absorb it all. But they had casually mentioned that their sheep, they had to vaccinate their whole flock for this disease called Campylobacter. And so we were like, oh wow, that sounds horrible. And they explained it that it was an abortion disease and um, they lost a few lambs and then they decided to go ahead and just vaccinate everybody because they didn't want to deal with um, anyone else having abortions. Well, when you hear that, you're just like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry that you lost all these lambs, which I think, I don't know how many they had lost, like maybe 15 or something. Um, but you know, you're empathetic with them and oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. So, um, we, uh, ended up loading up the sheep and I can't remember how many we got, like 10 to 12 or something. And, um, start to head home and we're just kind of casually discussing everything that we learned and we were like now what were they saying that they uh their sheep had uh, like oh okay that was the name campylobacter and so um i just casually did a search on it and it was like well it causes abortions um in sheep but uh ryan and i were just kind of like oh, okay well Hopefully that was a one-time thing and um, no big deal. Well, in my gut, I was like, okay, I, I feel like I need to address this and follow through, find out what Campylobacter is and make sure that it's not gonna affect my sheep long-term. And I am so glad that I did. <laughs> like, Because I could have just fluffed off that conversation and we could have said, oh, no big deal. They said it would be, um, not a big deal and we'll just go about what our goals are to make sure that we're always moving our sheep that we are parasite resistant and um, we don't vaccinate for things and that was our plan as we were headed home we're like it's it's no big deal well I get home and I start doing a little bit more research and come to find out that Campylobacter is a disease that um, sheep can get and there's multiple ways that they can get it through either like exposure of other placentas or um, also from like uh, crows and ravens flying by. Sorry. So um, there's multiple ways that they can get it. But um, I uh, went ahead and got on a Facebook page that I'm on and I posted just to see if any other sheep producers had any input on it. And instantly, instantly, I got comments back that were wild. <laughs> like the first comment was, oh my goodness, you need to get those sheep off of your farm as soon as possible. And Ryan and I reading that, we were like, what? What did we just get ourselves into? We thought this was no big deal. And, and so I ended up starting to call vets, vets um, around our area and trying to get as much information as I could on this. Come to find out that Campylobacter is not very well known, maybe just around Kansas, I don't know. Not very common, I guess. Because um, even one of the vets that I talked to, he said I went to a conference 
um, in the last year and only out of like 120 vets, only three of them had uh, ever seen Campylobacter. And the way that you can tell is from uh, the placenta when it comes out, it has like little, they called it like pepperonis on it. Um, so it's something within the placenta. But I don't know if I explained this, but Campylobacter can cause abortion storms. And so, so the lambs are definitely not going to go full term. They actually like abort very late in the pregnancy, but kind of once one starts, then all of them kind of go and they're all exposed to that fetus, which um, depends on your management. But if they're exposed to that fetus, then they could all get it. And so it was just a train wreck. And um, I don't know this to be true. Like I said, I am not a vet. Make sure that you do your own research if your animals or your uh, sheep are exposed to Campylobacter. But we tried to question multiple vets to see if Campylobacter from sheep could cross over to Campylobacter. Like, there's a different name for it, and I can't remember it since it happened last year. But there's a different name for it for cattle. And we were very worried, since we don't vaccinate our cattle for anything like that, that we were going to have to start a vaccination program for all of our cows and then all of our sheep. So that's another reason I don't want to badmouth these people because there is a solution to Campylobacter if your sheep have it that you can be on a vaccination program. Our intention was just not um, starting out. We were, wanted to start out with a good foundation and not have to deal with that or like do vaccinations from the beginning. So having them come to the farm and realizing that they had Campylobacter and we were getting ourselves into way more than we thought is why we decided to end up taking them back, which is another reason we are so grateful for these people. Um, we ended up having to call them. This was like four days after we, maybe even three days after they had come home with us and we were like, look, this is the situation. We didn't realize what we were getting ourselves into. We just really don't want to expose our cows, if that's even a possibility. And um, we didn't plan on becoming a part or like getting involved in a vaccination program. And we, this, is, this just isn't something that we want. Is there any way that we can take the sheep back? And these people were so nice and they allowed us to take the sheep back um and yeah like we will be forever grateful for that that they took them back because if we would have had to take them to the sale barn who knows what we would have got probably way less than what we spent on them and we would have um, lost a lot of money with the whole situation so um yeah i'm just so grateful to them that they took them back and um, obviously it wasn't a good situation that um, we were bringing them home but then decided to, <laughs> that that wasn't what we intended on buying and all of that but in the end no hard feelings um, we were just grateful to wipe our hands of it and be able to move on to our next set of sheep which we got a month later and we made sure to um, keep the area that the sheep, the first set of sheep that we got, um, we kept our other sheep far away from it. Uh, we went through the summer, so like all of the heat um, and then we're also going through the winter. So we're hoping that a full cycle of like um, you know, summer heat killing that bacteria and then um, also winter um, kind of cleansing that area that the sheep were in for those three to four days and then we'll be able to eventually move our uh, sheep flock back to that area um, for lambing in 2022. So anyways I just really wanted to make this video to educate other farmers, other beginning sheep farmers about a very dangerous disease 
um, as Campylobacter, but also wanted to educate you that it's not the only one that you need to be worried about. But um, yeah, you just, you can't let all of that worry um, stop you from becoming a sheep farmer or stop you from even starting. You just kind of have to jump in and learn as you go and try to um, make sure that your management is the best of your abilities. And that's why I also make those other two videos, just to make sure that you start with a good solid foundation and um, have your goals in mind from day one. So I hope you guys like this video. If you ever experienced Campylobacter or if you haven't even heard of it, um, leave a comment below. I'm interested to see if anybody has ever heard of it. Uh, obviously we hadn't and um, now we know what it is and I hope I never have to deal with it again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and then just another disclaimer that I am not a vet. Um, if you have any questions on Campylobacter, be sure that you question your um, your sheep vet or um, do your own research because yeah, it's just, don't take my advice because I've literally just had three days experience with it and some Google Googling and uh, I don't know the full effects of it. So I hope that you guys gained something out of this video. Be sure that you give it a like if you like um, the sheep educational content. I love being able to um, give you guys experience even though I'm only like eight months ahead of some of you who are just about to get sheep. Um, I'm eight months more uh, into the weeds and uh, already had some hiccups and hard lessons learned. Uh, so hopefully I can save you guys a couple hard lessons and that's just my goal with this channel. So thank you guys again for watching.